Hey, hey friends, this is day 15 of Russian war against Ukraine. Uh, you know, a lot of things are happening every day. There's a lot of news from the field. Um, you know, somebody was killed, um, that many bombs flew into uh, such and such buildings, Ukrainian drones had, had destroyed uh, so many pieces of, of Russian machinery. But I think we're in, a situ we are in a situation where we can miss the forest for the trees. And, and the forest is, the big picture is that Russian army is stuck. They cannot adv advance on any of the bigger cities uh, in Ukraine. In fact, all of them are Ukrainian apart from Kherson, and Kherson is, is debatable because, well, the Russians are controlling a few, have occupied a few government buildings. Is that really constitute uh, taking a city? So they're stuck and they've been trying, trying different tactics, you know, paratroopers, night attacks, uh, this and that to, to bomb cities to try to infiltrate and they could not do any of that. So uh, we're seeing that um, the, they are sort of in a crisis. Well, what, what are they going to do? And and the fear is and we'll, what we're starting to starting to see is that Russian army is turning to the tactics they've used in Aleppo, Syria, where they just try to annihilate cities completely to terrorize uh, local people to leave the city, um, to pressure their government into a peace deal. And this is, of course, goes into uh, the territory of war crimes and genocide. So the bombshell yesterday, well, literally, was that a huge aviation bomb, half a ton aviation bomb, uh, fell on two buildings. One of them was Children's Hospital and another was a birthing center. As you know, some of you know, in Ukraine, children are not born in regular hospitals. There is these birthing hospitals uh, that are uh, designated for, for this kind of function. So uh, this was deliberate. It's not like they were trying to hit something else and accidentally uh, hit children's hospital and, and birth, birthing center. They knew what, what they were hitting. What we're seeing is that Russian army being stuck, being cornered, are are behaving, behaving themselves um, radically, irrationally, and this is starting to look like genocide. For a lot of people I'm, I'm looking at who are trying to defend Russia, and I'm looking at you, Tucker Carlson, uh, saying that, well, Putin just doesn't want NATO at their doorstep. Putin just wants to protect his borders. Is that so? Is it, What kind of terrorists, what kind of NATO operatives are in the children's hospital? Are you, are you trying to protect your borders or what, what's happening here? What kind of danger does a children's hospital and a birthing hospital constitute to, to Russian territorial integrity? This, is, this has started to cross into genocide. If anybody had any kind of allusions towards, well, maybe, maybe Russia has something here, there's nothing. They're stuck and they're trying to terrorize civilians into leaving and into pressuring Ukrainian government to give up anything to, to, to bring peace. We're seeing the same situation with green corridors. Remember, we discussed this um, a few days back where Ukrainian uh, operatives or forces would, would make a deal with the Russians that we will cease fire for a few hours, let us take civilians out. And then as soon as that as that happens and civilians start, start to move out on, uh, on buses, on cars, Russians start to shoot up those columns. This has a really clear pattern of, of what Russians did in Syria. This is inhumane. This is terrorism, like by definition terrorism. They were trying to terrorize governments because they have no other way to go. And if you're a little tired of hearing me drone about closing Ukrainian skies, NATO, this is why is because both the children's hospital and the birthing hospital were hit by a half a ton aviation bomb. And they knew what they were doing. They knew what where they were bombing. In the beginning, when you see when you see the captured and they're like, oh, we didn't know where we're going. We, we thought we were in training. And then we saw Ukrainian signs and we realized we we're in Ukraine. Now that we're, try, we're already capturing some higher ops in Russian army, they tell us they know what they were doing. They have been given commands to shoot civilians, to, to bomb civilian targets specifically for that, for that reason. And that's, it's on video, it's not theoretical. 
so so the situation with with closing the skies is is serious it's it's because this is the, the this is the price we're paying for for not doing that for for nato playing their bureaucracy games you probably heard about the the weird situation around polish planes so the, the short story there is um it is uh Ukraine had found, not found, but we knew about old Soviet upgraded planes that were in Poland. And we said, well, if, if NATO, you guys cannot close our skies yourselves, can you give us those planes so we can shoot down bombers that shoot that kind of aviation hefeton bombs? And, and then Poland said, well, we kind of need our planes ourselves. And then uh, they said, well, we can do it if the United States gives us uh, F-16 planes instead of the MiG plane, the old Soviet MiG planes that we have now. Maybe that could be a thing. And every day the situation kept ch kept changing. And and lately the problem was that Poland doesn't want to seem like it's giving uh, Ukraine the planes. It said, well, what if we put those planes on the Rammstein base in in Germany and a NATO base in Germany, and it would look like NATO is giving Ukraine those planes. And of course each of those countries. Uh, separately like Poland, United States, they don't want to seem to Russia like, like they're, they're he helping Ukraine with, with planes. And, and as a NATO, NATO doesn't want to get involved either, we're not involved. So this kind of cowardice, this kind of uh, small, small mindedness is what's killing civilians. Like if NATO, it, its own, only purpose is to be a defensive alliance, this is by definition what you do. If NATO cannot defend Ukraine, and Ukraine is defending the, the entire Europe, I think in the course of our conversations, we have established that. Ukraine is the shield between Russia and the rest of Europe right now. So if Ukraine is defending it and you guys are a, def a, def a defense alliance, what, what good are you if you cannot even give us planes? Because you don't want to anger Russia. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Putin did say something like, "Well, if if Poland gives these planes to uh, to Ukraine, we will consider it an act of war." And you all listened, and you all were afraid. You know, the Russian army is not what it what it's thought to be. It's not that strong. It's not that um, in NATO aviation, U.S. alone, U.S.'s aviation could annihilate Russian aviation in about three days. We know that. What's the holdup? You, you're trying to remain neutral, all the while declaring how each of you is the biggest friend to Ukraine. There's a quote here from um, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki from yesterday, I think, answering a question. She, she said, uh, I think it's pretty clear. It doesn't require a military expert to understand why having planes fly from a U.S. airbase into a contested part of a country. By the way, stop saying contested part of the country. It's not contested. We're being invaded. Stop this bureaucratic bullshit. Um, where there's a war is not in our interest and not in NATO interests. I mean, what, what is your interest? What is NATO's interest? I thought you were the leaders of the free world. I thought NATO was a defensive alliance against the Soviet Union, which is now Russia. What is exactly your interest? You're hoping that what Ukraine will somehow stop Putin and then you wouldn't have to be involved. You wouldn't have the after history. You're gonna have a horrible analysis after the war, war is over because you know, Ukraine will stop this in one way or another by one price of, of civilian deaths, uh, one amount or another. It's gonna happen. I, I think it's pretty clear. So it, it, is a, it is a cowardly position to wait it out and hope that whatever it takes on Ukrainian side, however many children, however many civilians, how many, how many ever unborn get to pay the price so you don't get involved and you don't tarnish your reputation with Russia. You're letting Russia kowtow you into, into silence and in, into inaction while your declared goals are being put to nothing. This is, this is frustrating. I mean, it's it's one thing to bomb you know airports and and infrastructure it's another to hit a children's hospital and a birthing hospital with a half a ton bomb from an airplane if this is not a justification for closing skies over ukraine i don't know what is this is this is hu hugely frustrating
because the world stands by and hopes it somehow will pass them by. They're not going to have to deal with that. So we're seeing that some green corridors are, are starting to work. Um, from Sumy, uh, about uh, what was it, 30,000 people were evacuated. Mariupol is the one that still can't get out. I think what Russian forces are trying to do is is to encircle Mariupol and make an example out of it. Uh, do do another Aleppo trick uh, on it uh, because uh, because what we're seeing is any green corridor that's being set up in, in Mariupol gets shut down immediately because the Russian, Russians keep shooting. In the West, I understand why it's, why it's hard to understand what's going on. Uh, it's because when you read the press, you know, the press is trying to be objective. And of course, um, objectiveness, objectivity, what's the word, I don't know, um, is, is impossible. Like, in order to make anything out of the information that we get from, from the field, you have to take one, one position or another. You cannot say Ukraine claims. You cannot say, well, it's contested territory. You have to take a position in order to uh, to see what's good, what's good and what's evil. And in this, in this situation, it's pretty clear. Ukraine was never a threat to to Russia. NATO was never a threat to Russia. And what I'm looking at, what what Tucker Carlson is saying, that this is bullshit. Like. Uh, what what Putin's afraid that NATO is going to put their bases and and put their rockets against uh, against uh, Russia and somehow invade and somehow what start bombing Russia? Why haven't they done it in 1991? 1991, Soviet Union was uh, was torn apart, economy was all time low, no defense, no self organization, no political apparatus. Many countries did not even have government. That was a perfect time to bomb. That was a perfect time to take over. Did NATO do this? Of course they didn't. Because NATO is truly a defensive alliance. So so to say that, well, Russia is just trying to protect their borders, it's utter, utter bullshit. Utter bullshit. And while the West is playing bureaucracy games and, and, and trying to wash their hands of, of getting involved with Russia, Ukrainian children are being killed. Ukrainian civilians are, are being killed. This is not going to go well for the West after the war is over. So Ukraine will stop it. You, looking at the history of Ukraine, we've been up against wars. But what does this say about the West? What does this situation say, say about the West? What does the bureaucracy gains? What does the silence? And what does the you know pretense objectivity say about this? So uh, as you can tell, I'm, I'm, I'm hugely frustrated by this, uh, especially in the, light, in the light of these news. This is not a war anymore. This is just starting to look like a genocide to me. All right, friends, I'm hoping I'll have more cheerful, cheerful news for you tomorrow, um, but, but today, today was not a good day.